Today I want to talk about ADHD and regulating emotions. As regular viewers will know, I was recently diagnosed with ADHD, so from now on I'm going to make videos about ADHD as well as autism. Being autistic and having ADHD have many crossovers, so if you have ADHD it's probably worth watching my autism videos and if you have autism it's probably worth watching my ADHD videos too. In fact, I'd like a term that covers those of us that have both autism and ADHD. AUTHD perhaps, or ADH ought, because trying to make content for both is a nightmare when you're looking for a keyword friendly title, so if I put anything that has autism and ADHD into my keyword selector it just goes, uh uh, no way. But why do you have to choose a keyword friendly title Ella? I'll tell you why. If I don't choose a keyword friendly title then YouTube won't index my video properly and no one will see it, and the entire purpose of my working life will be lost. I'll fall into a pit of what is the point of me if I can't help and encourage people on the internet despair. I'll drown my sorrows in bubble tea and you'll find me ranting in a corner about how can I do anything if I can't make a difference? And nobody wants that. So until we have a crossover name for both and ideas in the comments for that, I'll be making videos and titling them with whichever condition seems most relevant and hoping that the content is useful for everyone. On with the video. When I first started exploring whether I might have ADHD, I spoke to someone really close to me about it, and they said, no way Ella, your biggest problem is emotional lability, and ADHD is all about hyperactivity and distractibility and impulsiveness. Um, nope. And again, no way. ADHD very much does impact on emotional regulation. Obviously, I then sent them links to articles all about ADHD and emotional regulation, which they never responded to. Disappointing. A quick look on the diagnostic page for ADHD on the NHS and I find this on the list of symptoms. Mood swings, irritability and a quick temper. So yeah, it feels good to be right. So yeah, ADHD might be the reason that you feel your emotions more strongly and why you struggle to manage them and why you seem to have difficulty controlling your temper and why you've had a lifetime of being called overly sensitive. Since when is overly sensitive an insult? Why is it an insult to be a sensitive human? I just, I don't get it. First up, something reassuring. Your emotions are normal. Going through life experiencing a variety of emotions is totally normal. The issue for people with ADHD is how we regulate and respond to our emotions. And that is not our fault. But it does cause issues in our day to day lives. So why do people with ADHD struggle to regulate their emotions? Once again I'm going to blame my brain. I love my brain but sometimes it just doesn't play fair. Emotional dysregulation comes from the brain and the nervous system. Changes to features like impulse control, executive function and working memory. The same areas which also cause inattention, hyperactivity and impulsivity. So first of all, the impulsivity which we associate with ADHD can also impact the way that we respond to our emotions. So before I knew I had ADHD and started taking ADHD medication, my reaction to emotions usually went something like this. Something I don't like happens. I feel something and it isn't a good feeling. I react with tears, anger and irritability wherever I am, even if it's incredibly public. I then feel bad, embarrassed and less than because I didn't react the way that I had wanted to and my self esteem dips. Once I started to take medication, my brain added a new step to this process and now it went a little something like this. Something I don't like happens, I feel something and it isn't a good feeling. My brain asks me, what can we do about this feeling? Perhaps you need a little alone time or space to process the feeling. Perhaps you need to do something good to make yourself feel better. I have alone time, calm down and begin to feel better. I manage the situation well and I feel empowered and my self esteem rises. Now, obviously this doesn't work out perfectly every time and I'm certainly not saying that ADHD medication is for everyone. But for me, that medication induced pause point has made regulating my emotions just much more manageable. It's also helped me to work on my self soothing skills, skills which don't come naturally to people with ADHD. Self soothing is behaviour that we use to regulate our emotions. People with ADHD might have trouble finding and implementing self soothing strategies. Next up, 
reasons my brain needs a little extra help. So, the brain connectivity networks which carry emotional information don't work as well for people with ADHD. Working memory impairments allow a momentary emotion to become too strong. This causes the brain to be flooded with one emotion, which is overwhelming and tends to lead to freaking out. Understandable. So this one emotion in your brain crowds out all other information, such as information that might help you to understand and regulate that emotion. Due to these working memory impairments, we also struggle with how to respond because that would involve knowing what happened last time, how you might want to respond this time and what you want to achieve with that response. That's a lot of steps. There's no way my brain is considering all of those factors when it's flooded with a massive emotion. Reasoning fails and all that is left is this feeling, which tends to lead to freaking out. Again, understandable. Added to this the fact that we're not really great at refocusing our attention and moving it away from the emotion, and it's super hard to be rational because we don't know how to get away from emotions. More reasons my brain tends to freak out. Rejection sensitivity. In a nutshell, we can be more sensitive to perceived and actual rejection. So when we perceive rejection, perhaps someone uses a less than chipper tone, or they pause before they commit to meeting up with us. We feel bad. I'm going to make a whole video about rejection sensitivity in the coming months, so do keep an eye out for that. Next up, we don't do well with distinguishing between major and minor problems. Which explains why I freak out equally over something like getting mud on a brand new pair of trousers to the impending death of a loved one. It's awkward. I feel just as bad in either situation, but the world tends to be less understanding about muddy trousers, broken glasses, or unexpected lateness. Alexithymia can play a part in emotional regulation. That's the ability to distinguish individual emotions. For me, emotions tend to be either good or bad. That's about all the distinction that I get. Not knowing what emotion you're actually feeling or why is actually really overwhelming. I made a video about alexithymia with channel regular Roz, and I'll link to that video below. My brain just isn't very rational, and that means that sometimes even positive emotions can be problematic. So let's say, for example, I put up a new video, and it does well, and people are responding with lots of positive feedback, and I feel super happy and excited. I text lots of friends, I might even make some video calls, because feeling excited and happy makes me want to be sociable. I use lots of emotional energy, reveling in the positive emotion. Forgetting that I'm actually exhausted at the end of a long day of working, what I actually need is some downtime to regulate. I just roll with the happy, excited feeling and I don't pay attention to my self-care needs and sometimes even this can end in meltdown. Before I got my ADHD diagnosis, I never could understand why, even though I understood how to respond to situations like impending meltdowns or irritability in terms of my autism, when the situation arose, I never seemed to be able to actually implement the strategy. Now I know that my ADHD means that I'm impulsive, so I'm much less likely to think through a situation and respond appropriately. So, are we destined to be at the mercy of our emotions forever? First up, a celebration of ADHDers and emotions. Having big emotions is not a bad thing. Being sensitive, also not a bad thing. We get excited and passionate easily, and that can make us really fun to be around. Being sensitive means that we're more likely to be sensitive to the things that are happening in the world and to care and to try and do something about it. Living in a world of big emotions is hard, but it's why I'm able to do the work that I do and why I'm the person that I am, and I wouldn't change that. I wouldn't change my big emotions. Instead, I want to learn the skills to respond and to regulate them in a less full-on disruptive way. And that's possible. Here are some tips for getting some control over your emotions. First up, the obvious self-care stuff. Make sure that you are getting enough sleep, that you are eating healthy foods, and that you are taking care of you in the way that works best for you. Learn to recognise your emotional warning signs. I'm starting to recognise the beginnings of those big happy feelings, so that I can respond to them in a way that's better for me. I'm also better at recognising the quiet, rumbling irritability that means that a meltdown might be on the way. Once you can recognise your emotional warning signs and you understand how you usually react, then you can start to plan for and learn skills to be able to respond to them better in the future. I'd recommend starting an emotions diary. Write down what emotion you felt and how you responded to it and what the result of the response was. And if the response didn't go well, you could also perhaps write down how you might respond to it differently in the future. I'd also recommend noting the triggers for emotional reactions. You could jot those down in the diary too. 
I know that success with my work tends to lead to the big overwhelming happy feelings and I know that difficulties in my closest relationship tends to lead to the sad, irritable, overwhelmed feelings. In time, emotional journaling will help you to start to recognise the warning signs and to have a plan in place for how to respond to those emotions in a healthy and balanced way. For me, it's usually best not to act at all. Instead, it's usually helpful to find somewhere quiet to take the time to sit with the emotion and process it and figure out how I want to respond to it. One of the things that I do in those times that I've found really helpful is to get my emotions out using either writing or art. This is a really helpful way to process your emotions and work out what you're feeling and what you want to do about it. And it's also a really good way to deal with the need to vent without actually venting at the person or situation that made you feel that way. I want to finish by saying this. I've spent my entire life feeling less than because of my emotional responses. Feeling bad because I didn't seem to respond the same way as other people. Working really hard to try and contain my emotions and then feeling really bad because I failed to do so. Now I know that I was looking at it all wrong. It's much better for me to focus on the positives than to look at the negatives. Sure, being autistic and having ADHD comes with a set of challenges, but it also comes with a set of strengths and without it, I wouldn't be me. So I want you to know that you are brilliant. Yes, even when you sat in the supermarket and sobbed, and even when you danced down the street with excitement, especially when you danced down the street with excitement, you are brilliant. We are all different, and you are the most perfect version of you that there has ever been or ever will be. So get out there and rock it. If you like this video as much as I hope you like yourself, then please do hit the like button. And if you fancy subscribing to my channel, that would be fab. If you'd like to financially support me as a creator, there are a few ways that you can do that. You could join my YouTube club, The Purple People, by clicking the join button. I've also recently, after requests, opened up a Ko-Fi board. So that's a place where you can either just buy me a cuppa to say thank you for my work, or I also have a little shop where you can buy my stickers. Finally, you could get your hands on one of my hoodies, sweatshirts, or t-shirts. So I'll leave the link to the Ko-Fi board and my clothing below. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.